Accounting is as old as civilization. Accounting existed way before civilization, and in this session, I'll be taking you through the metamorphosis of accounting, or call it the history of accounting, right from 8,500 BC to the modern day. This is Kisemo Academy. Now, scholars state that accounting started more than 10,000 years ago in Mesopotamia, that is present-day Iraq and Iran. During this time, merchants always shipped their merchandise up and down the rivers. Now, this practice of shipping meant that merchants would not always personally accompany their goods, and so this meant that they had to entrust other boatmen with their goods. Now, unfortunately, like it may be the case in our present day, some boatmen were dishonest. It is this dishonesty that led to the disagreement about how much had been shipped versus what had actually been received at the other end. It is against this background that the merchants introduced small clay tokens in various shapes and in various tokens. For instance, one would mean a basket of grain, while another would mean a pot of oil, and so on. So before shipping their goods, a merchant would take one token for each item in the shipment and encase the token in a bowl of clay, which they called bowl eye. Now the bowl would be dried in the sun, given to the boatman, and then broken by the buyer on the other end of the transaction. The buyer would then match the tokens with the items in the shipment to verify that everything was accounted for. Now, if you think about this, in the modern day, instead of using bowls of clay, we use documents like the goods dispatch note, the goods received note, a bill of landing, and so on. So as time went on, the tokens were further developed into pieces of flat clay. New symbols were created and eventually both writing and number systems were invented. These simple records were simply single entry listings of items like temple assets, taxes and wages paid, taxes and tributes to the king, and this dates back around 3300 to 3200 BC. Now then comes the Renaissance period. Now for those who do not know what I mean by Renaissance, the Renaissance era was simply a period in European history marking the transition from the Middle Age to modernity, and it covers the 15th and the 16th centuries. So during the Renaissance era, there was a revival of classical art, architecture, literature, and learning, which originated in Italy and later on spread throughout Europe. Trade during this era increased tremendously as well. So because of this increase in trade, accurate records were necessary to ensure successful transportation and sale of goods. Now, about the same time, Arabic numbers existed, and so borrowing from the Arabic number system, the Romans used this as a basis for math to develop their own detailed accounting system, which evolved into the double-entry bookkeeping system that is in use today. Around 1494, Luca Pacioli wrote a book entitled Summa de Arithmetica Geometrica Proportional et Proportionalita, now, that is translated as everything about arithmetic, geometry, and proportion. In this book, this Italian monk, Luca Pacioli, wrote about the double-entry system of accounting, and it is because of his writings that the double-entry system became largely embraced as the system of accounting. However, at that time, he documented this, the double entry system had been in use for at least a hundred years. So it is not that he invented it, but rather he documented it and explained it in detail. This is why he is often referred to as the father of accounting. The practice of double entry bookkeeping was so accurate that it truly survived the test of time and as a result it is the standard of accounting we use today. As years went on, the double entry system led to the creation of financial statements that are instrumental in accounting today. So around 1600, financial statements like profit and loss statements and statements of balances began to emerge. These statements were created from the records kept within the double entry system that Luca Pacioli documented in his writings. 
The main reason for creating the financial statements was to obtain additional information about the business where merchants and businesses were looking for more money to fund their operations. By the way, if you realize even today, when businesses want financing, they are required to present financial statements to potential funders for, for purposes of verifying if they deserve the funding. It is therefore worth noting that the purpose and concept of financial statements has not changed much. So businesses continue to evolve and expand over the next 100 years or so. Soon the United States began conducting business with England. The increase in business transactions, especially between two countries, meant more information was required about the corporations. This ushered in the development of corporations in 1845 in England. Now, the corporations that were created involved stakeholders like investors, shareholders, who created the demand for more accounting information. This led to the development of accounting standards and laws to ensure that corporate officers acted ethically and provided information to facilitate sound business decisions. At the same time, the industrial revolution occurring within the United States also required more formal practices and regulations as well as professional standards. The expansion of business entities in the 1800s required their owners to hire persons to maintain their books of accounts. In addition, companies started dominating the business environment, therefore necessitating owners, that is the shareholders, to hire managers to handle the day-to-day -day activities of the firm on their behalf. This in turn required owners to hire independent persons, the auditors, to monitor the activities of managers by auditing their financial information. It is auditing that brought about the birth of the accountancy profession. The first accountancy organization, the Institute of Chartered Accountants of Scotland, was established in 1854. The Institute of Chartered Accountants of England and Wales was established in 1880, and the American Institute of Certified Public Accountants was established in 1887. So in October 1977, 63 professional accountancy bodies from 50 countries founded the International Federation of Accountants, a global organization for the accountancy profession. From what we can see so far, you realize that accounting developed purely in response to the needs of the time. The changes that have come in the accounting practice have been brought about by the changes in the environment and the societal demands. These developments in accounting over the years have brought about the evolution of commerce and since it was only through the use of more precise accounting methods that modern businesses was able to grow, flourish and respond to the needs of its owners and the public, we can therefore conclude that accounting began because people needed to do these three main things. They needed to record business transactions, they needed to know if they were financially successful in their operations, and they also needed to know how much they owed and how much they were owed. This brings us to the end of this session on the history of accounting. Thanks for watching.